Hello everyone, it's Paul here. Uh, welcome to my channel if you're new and certainly welcome back if you're an existing subscriber. Uh, brings me to a point, first of all, I have to give a big thank you to Michael Walt. Um, I had Thursday, Friday and Monday off, today's Tuesday, been back to work today and I mean I work in IT so I've got computers, tablets, phones and everything all around me and so therefore I keep a, a quite a, a keen eye on, on the YouTube channel and since I started turning six weeks ago now uh, my videos started probably about two three months ago uh, all about the building of the workshop and everything right from the planning stage and during that time I've watched the subscribers slowly go up and slowly watched it get past the teens, the 20s, the 30s and I think it was Thursday, Friday I got into the 40s and then all of a sudden yesterday morning when I got up and had a look at the YouTube channel I got over 80 subscribers and I wondered what on earth was going on so it wasn't until our last night I actually sat there and watched uh, Mike's latest video that he gave me a shout out so thank you very much Mike and I hope everybody is quite happy with what I'm doing. Um, please do leave some comments um, if you think there's something about my videos that, that you don't like or all the ways to improve. This, this latest project, back to the pallet wood again. Uh, I gave you a slight preview on the last video uh, that I had a bunch of electronics all set on top of my iPad. So if you missed that, just skip back to the previous video. Uh, just see the first couple of three minutes on there and you'll see at the end of me talking there I've got the, the, the iPad full of electronics. Basically what I've used is an, an Arduino board. They're what they call a microcontroller and you can program them. Uh, you don't have to be a scientist to do it. Um, there's loads and loads of code that you can just simply copy and paste and there's loads of examples even with the software and everything you can get things up and running straight away. Now an Arduino board, a microcontroller, is supposed to be a bit like a Raspberry Pi, um, but it is more for the, it's not really for attaching keyboards and stuff like that to, um, you can do, use it for anything from controlling LEDs, so if you want a flashing sequence or something, you can have the old PIR motion sensors, uh, you can run motors, um, all sorts of sensors. I mean, I've had one where it was running a temperature um, humidity and air pressure sensor and that basically exported to another program and produced a 24 hour rolling graph so basically your imagination with the of an Arduino board is is the limit and still further on from that so what have I done <coughs> well basically a year about a year ago I decided to create something on the Arduino um, a rotating platform now I've got a GoPro camera. One of the best things about the GoPro camera that I love is the time lapse. And you can specify to take pictures anything from half a second, right the way up to I think five minutes or something like that. Might not probably be that long, but certainly once a minute or something like that. And in the past I've used it for various things. I mean, I've attached it on my motorbike, had it on my crash helmet, on the forks, on the back, back of the motorbike. Um, I've done various other things, I've done night nice scenes and everything in, in the garden. Um, the only downside on the GoPro is that the battery lasts about an hour. And so when I did my night nice scenes in the, in the, in the garden, um, I had it out there running for about six hours and basically I had it attached to, what's this, a 10,400 milliamp battery pack. Um, again, another eBay purchase, I paid about 10 to 15 pounds for it. And I mean, that camera would be running out there for up to about six hours at night and about half the battery life gone. So that was, that's really the only downfall. But anyway, time-lapse is brilliant if you've got something moving. Um, but at the same time as well, I wanted to add an extra element where it's panning as well at the same time. So with my electronics, the Arduino, I basically created a little program on it which controls what I call a stepping motor, which is not the most economical of motors. Um, and on that, I've programmed it so that I can specify whichever direction I want it to go in. I can even tell it to do a 
part circle, so I can say where to start from and where to end at. Each time it hits the other end, the camera just rotates, rotates in the other direction. And what I've also done, I've done it so that it rotates. I mean, <coughs> um, you can specify whether it rotates a full revolution once, once a minute, once every five minutes, 15, 30, or even once an hour. Um, so, it, and as again, because it's all programmed, stuff like that, you, all you've basically got to do is plug a USB lead into, into the Arduino board and you can re-download more code. So therefore, again, if you didn't like those, you could soon change them and stuff like that. Now, so what have I created? <coughs> this is finally what I've created. Uh, not sure how well you'll see on there. Basically, as you can see, I've got my GoPro camera there. It is a little bit wobbly, um, but that's not a problem on time lapse because being an action camera, it's taking pictures quick and and it's not moving like a mass speed anyway. And the reason it's wobbly, the, the, the coupling I've got on there is a flexible coupling. Uh, one of the only ones I could find on eBay, I just thought it would probably be, be better anyway. Um, so that could possibly change. Reason for the tall column, GoPro cameras are very wide angle. So you need to have, have that extra height. And the reason the base is so big, um, um, and the back here of basically is where I saw the battery. Um, I'll try and flip this over. I'm not happy about the, the, the box here, uh, the battery box. Um, so as you can see there, I've used a full size, um, it's a six cell battery. Basically that's from an old radio control car I bought about ooh, seven or eight years ago, 36 milliamp hours. Um, and that lasts, I think I tested it, it lasts probably about 18, 20 hours, so there's plenty of life on there. Uh, in the front section here, behind here is where all the electronics sit. So we've got a display here, got our on off button, and there's three buttons. Not labelled up, so it's not easy. <laughs> um, so basically the red button basically starts, should start and stop the rotation. So if I hold this still, you should hopefully see the camera starting to go round if if I've got it high enough. So you can already see the camera going round and it's quiet as well so it's not loud or anything like that but the other good thing about using the stepping motor is it's precise um, so it will stop where you want it to. Uh, the other two buttons what they basically do is one's used to select the different options through the menu so that you can just step down each step in the menu and the other button is a select. So what have I learned and what, have, what problems have I had with this? Uh, the dome itself I, I basically glued up all little squares of, of pallet board. It's the hardwood board again like I the brown bits that I used in the last video. Um, glued them all up, turned them all down nicely, got a nice shape on there, hollowed out right all the inside, no problem. Then the problem I had was when I start, then started up making this base, because I've done this in two sections, so this the battery compartment where, where that is. I then found that my battery compartment wasn't wide enough for for this. And it wasn't far out, it's only probably two or three mil narrower and it would have gone on there a treat. It's just so that I didn't bust through the edges of the battery box. And so I tried sanding all the bottom down of the corner and it just, being hardwood, it just wasn't going. I got my rotary tool out with the sander bit on it, started going around and started scuffing bits out everywhere and it became a right mess. And because this is curved and stuff like that, I was having an absolute nightmare on the lathe as well, holding it, I was trying to hold it in the jaws with, with um, kitchen roll and everything to try and not mark it. Um, and after several failed, and several failed attempts, in the end I ended up creating a jam chuck, uh, which is on the lathe still now. Uh, which also brings me to one point, my last video, you probably see where I had a catch because of the skew chisel. Uh, I've watched a couple of videos since, Mike and Carl Jacobson re-watched their videos on the Scoot There's one or two more I'm going to watch as well, but went straight back on here. While I turned this down, because it was the full size there, two inch um, a square piece of timber, I did have a play with the Scoot Chisel, doing some shaping and stuff like that, and I've got my confidence back with the Scoot Chisel again. Still very wary because um, I think it's one of the least forgiving tools out there. Um, just that if you get a catch, it can be quite quite bad. So anyway, I turned that down, put this back on top, and I ended up getting a catch again. So I've actually got a piece here, uh, which literally just chopped out. So super glued in, 
Um, the other thing I've found with this as well, I've seen this on somebody else's video with something else. It's when you catch the light properly, I mean I don't know whether the camera will ever show up on this or not, but I think there's a piece on the end grains there. Um, that it catch, when it catches the light it's like one of those holographic images where all of a sudden the whole scene changes, like one of those 3D images. So the box itself, the battery box, nice and easy to create. Um, everything done down on the planer, so everything was, was almost perfect to size. Um, the base of the battery box, I'm not happy with. Um, the hinge is wobbly, the catch is all right. Um, it's not a perfect fit. And I also learned another mistake as well. Don't try and screw brass screws in, into hardwood, otherwise they snap. As I found out, two screws snapped in there. I then spent half an hour, if not an hour, trying to drill the screws out, fill it all up with, with um, super glue and sawdust and everything, like wood shavings and stuff like that again, so that I can actually have something for it to fit to. Um, the front of the display here, because this was a little bit too open, uh, you could see too much at edges of the display, I just had to create this little, little bit on the front here. That was just out of a piece of softwood on the pallet wood again, so same wood as I used on the last project when I did the, the, the pallet bowl. Uh, the white wood is basically the from the sheet there, so I basically used the router, um, cut out all the curved circles, um, sanded it all down and everything, and used a little um, coping saw to cut the angles and everything, uh, just basically glued on the front there. So overall, I'm really, really pleased with this. Um, does precisely what I wanted. Um, it's quite a weight, I think, basically because of the battery. And I, I mean, this is fairly hefty wood anyway. Uh, long term, I think what I'd also possibly like to do is probably stick a drill a hole through the bottom there, stick a nut in, so that basically it's tripod mountable as well, uh, which would just add that bit of extra that you want to do. So apologies for such a long video talking here. This has actually been quite a mammoth project. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, probably quite pleased it's over to be honest, because um, it has been that big. Uh, once again, if you're new, I'm trying to push myself all the time. I think it's time I probably had a couple of three videos of trying to do something a bit easy for a change, uh, but I'm sure I'll probably put, introduce something else extra in there. So please do subscribe. Um, I do do a vast different things, mainly on softwood. I mean, that is probably one of the hard, only piece of hardwood I've really ever used, and it was pallet wood again. For my existing subscribers, and especially new subscribers, thank you very much. It really does mean the world to me. Um, so again, thank you very much. Please do hit the like button, hit the share button, and certainly do leave comments, because I mean, I'd like to, I'm here to learn, to try and do as much as possible and without your feedback then I'm not really going to do any changes so and again please do comment on what you think of the videos like I say apologies this one is an awful lot of talking at the beginning because there was so much to go through to try and explain what it all does and everything so it's probably a good 15-20 minutes I'm talking here so I will shut up um, I'll let you see the video um, of, of producing this and um, I'll, there'll be some pictures at the end so thanks a lot bye Right, so this is my current project um, and I need to somehow mount all of this into something. I was originally going to use a plastic box. Uh, this is a project I was work, started working on about a year ago um, on the electronic side. So we basically have a motor here with a coupler and the thread sticking out the top. I need to mount that into a block of wood so at least ideally the the nut and thread are sticking out the top not everything here has got to be housed and not everything will be used so I'm gonna have to the motor driver here fit in a box somewhere so again if I make this tall enough that might well be able to sit in the bottom underneath um, the display here has got to be mounted on something so that being flat is going to have to go on a flat square piece. So the idea here is basically this round will be a round dome and then that can be sat on top of a square block. On the board here um, we've got the little microcontroller, the Arduino, 
Uh, there's three switches, but I'm not using those switches. Uh, the display, the motor, the motor controller, the Arduino board, and each of the switches is also tied up to a small resistor. So again, they don't take up much space. This will not be used. Um, it's just purely simply at the moment I'm using this to show me the voltage of the battery, how much power it's using. So it's just really for for testing purposes. Now, I've got two choices of battery here. Now I'd ideally like to make a base to fit both. <coughs> you sleeping all worn out and dreaming you slept through the fall I know you love this time of year it always makes you smile the fall of grace grace none of us blame We're crashed out in a field in misery. Me and you in my 82 BW in 
Clouds on the street Leaves are pinned by restless winds and fear Premonition, intuition, troubles near Poncho Graham from Birmingham is here The grinding fades from combine blades The tractor's hungry heart o'clock the blackbird flock is gone and no one knows why jenna rose just disappeared but hansel graham from birmingham is here Eyes are sinking in the wind The little toys from little boys are gone Silence fills the flower mills and streets are clear Honcho Graham from Birmingham is here
Every year there's less of here as nature chews it down A town bereft and all that's left is rust But any gent who smelled the scent of solemn fear Knows Honcho Graham from Birmingham was here Honcho Graham from Birmingham was